Today, I have a lot of work to do, and that is the time when my creative uh, impulses start to go. So, uh, I'm going to compose a woodwind duet for two woodwind instruments. I never, I usually, I usually compose on a piece of paper. I usually use a piece of paper and Oops. You might notice, and I'm quite proud to say, I turned off the audio feedback. I'm, I'm proud to say it because uh, it's all part of ear training. I don't know where I'm going with this uh, melody. <clears throat> oh yeah, I should uh, should let the should let the person breathe. It's one, two, three, four, five measures. Five and a half measures. And it's, it's really just, you know, everybody has a diatonic scale in their head. Everybody can sing, uh, you know, Sunny. Yesterday my life was uh, uh, sunny. And then someday... Uh, 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 can't remember the lyrics. Da, 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 da. Sunny one so true, I love you. Anybody can sing that, you know. Everybody's got a diatonic scale, minor diatonic, so they can go, they can go, you know. Oops. Do. Do 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 uh do 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 Um, 
That was a B flat, right? just the right amount of coffee so here we are measure 12 can't slow down can't slow down can't slow down Here, I'm not going to specify, but an intelligent artist will play this very quietly. In my opinion, it's good to be opinionated in music, but not to shove your opinions in other people's faces, just to have an opinion. To have an opinion and to volunteer it sometimes. Key change. change so here's my problem with muse score now I've done like this key change I haven't changed the key signature but I'm obviously in a different key you know what I mean so like right now I'm in C sharp minor I want a sharp four I want it four is F sharp F sharp is four now if so the regular four, the four is is F sharp. So a sharp four, you know, would be F sharp sharp to sharped. You want to sharp the F sharp, and that will yield you F double sharp. So uh, I know I can customize this panel here, but so what? So I don't even know. I think there's like a, a short there's a keyboard shortcut, but Syria, I have to go over here and click. I hate using the mouse. I'm only 32 years old and I'm already working on some carpal tunnel so this bothers me. So I need to exit note entry mode. I want to modify the duration of this note without changing the note. So I have to at first exit note entry mode and then press 4 while I have this F double sharp selected that will turn it into an eighth note. If I did the other thing while I was still in note entry mode and then I hit 4 that would not change the direction the duration of the note. I would have to hit F and that would make it into an eighth note but it would also reset the um, accidental to be F natural <sighs> okay so G sharp and because because I like to do this when I'm in B flat I've got two flats in the key signature and I'm working now in C sharp minor 
and I want this G again here at the end of the measure. I had a G sharp at the beginning of the measure, so I want to just go ahead and give them a courtesy sharp. That's just my standard operating procedures. And again, I'm in node entry mode, so this doesn't do anything. I have to exit node entry mode by pressing the N key, and now give it a sharp. Um, and we'll continue on. And I could, I could, you know, go ahead and oh, put a new key signature in, but I will not do that. I will not, because uh, to hell with that. The next two, I might choose to go back into any other key. There's a lot of different keys. Who says I want to be tied to one key? I know I stuck with one key the whole time here. I call that laziness, you know, and plus, plus, you know, there's a reason that J.S. Bach wrote uh, some of the preludes in the Well-Tempered Clavier. He wrote them in C, the key of C sharp, you know, seven sharps. Huh, wouldn't he be, be better served using five flats and just call it D flat? It's an enharmonically the same key. It's enharmonic. That means, you know... C sharp equals D flat. It's enharmonic. It's it's synonymous. It's like spelling the same word a different way. You could you could spell it C sharp or you could spell it D flat. Well, what that does is it puts you in using when you're in seven sharps, you are more likely to run into this double sharp, and that's good. It creates a lot of whiny musicians, but if they stop whining and they get to work, they will come out of it the other side a stronger musician. And if I stop complaining about the world and get back to work, I'll come out of it a stronger musician. So here I go on an A sharp. Because it prefers B flat, I have to go, oh, still no A sharp. Exit note entry mode. Now I have A-sharp. Re-enter note entry mode by pressing the N key. Now we're in a C-sharp Dorian. I'm going to call that the end because I don't have all day here. So again, here I am. I am outside of node entry mode. <clears throat> Hold down the shift key and the right arrow. I've got all the way to the end of the piece. <clears throat> and I hold down command and I hit on a Mac there's two delete keys and they're not the same. The one that would be a backspace key on the Microsoft keyboard, that's not the one I'm going to use. I'm going to use the other one that would be a delete key on the Microsoft keyboard and is also a delete key on the Mac keyboard. The one that's in the little square up here, the top right, with the page up, page down, home, end. <clears throat> this delete key. So I'm going to hold down command on a PC. I believe it is control. And I'm going to hold down command and hit delete. And delete those measures and so I have a nice little uh, 18 19 tw 20 measures 20 measures of some would call it music um, and let's not be too ambitious here you know just uh, I can, I can I, I always say I'm not going to be ambitious and then I get then I get ambitious mm-hmm
I'm going to curveball. Curveball. Again, I hit the up arrow. It prefers flats. I would rather have it just become an A sharp. Uh, there needs to be some kind of like, if I hold down the shift key, no, it doesn't do anything. I want to be able to, like, if I hold down the control key, no, that does a, that's a Mac OS shortcut. If I hold down the option key, okay, I get up in the next, uh, I get into the other staff, and that's good to be able to do, but what I want to be able to do is hold down a key, and now when I hit the up arrow, all it does, it will not change the note name. It'll still be an A, but it will change the accidental. And I could just hold down that key and go up, 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 and it'll be like sharp, double sharp, triple sharp, quadruple sharp. You know, who who is ever going to use a triple sharp? You know, I probably won't, but still, to, to, to just be able to change the accidental and have the note stay the same. So, but I want an A sharp here. Why do I want an A sharp? It's the same as a B flat. Why would he? Why would he do that? Why would I do that? Well, it's. I'm thinking about what scale I'm saying to myself that I'm in. I'm saying now I'm in a, you know, G major, uh, a major diatonic. So this would be my sharp nine. I want to call it a sharp nine. I don't want to call it a flat three. I want to call it a sharp nine. So this is one, two, three, or eight, nine, ten. And um, that's what it is. And then uh, sharp four, sharp 11, and a sharp five. Again, prefers flats. It wants me to wants me to call it an E flat or a flat six, which I was in the minor mode, and a flat six, you know, would be. And then so this uh, sharp five is a whole step below this minor seven. It says it's like a it's like a flat six, flat six, flat seven, uh, but. Uh, I want to do something uh, like um, now, just to avoid confusion. We'll avoid confusion by creating other confusion. Or you know what I could do. Just call it F sharp. And then here, I will supply the musician with a redundant natural sign. And I do not know if there's actually a way to put parentheses. Usually the convention that I'm familiar with is to put parentheses around an accidental if it is a redundant courtesy accidental. So I'm in note entry mode and I hold down shift plus the equals key and it doesn't work. It should work, but okay, I had to have, I had to have my, my blue cursor. See, there's two, see, there's the blue note head that says this note head is selected, but there's also the blue shaded area, which is like my cursor. So the, you saw for a second there, I had it, it was like this blue note head plus the shaded blue area. It's quirky. I mean, it's quirky. It's not. It's it's. It's free software. Still F sharp, F natural. And what I like about this is it's a tension. We have a flat seven and a major seven. It's this tension between what mode am I in? And it's this half step dissonance, and you can decide how you want to tune it. You know, do you want it a near or far? Do you want it equal tempered or 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 Pythagorean? Do you want it a big or small half step? And honestly, the scope of your vibrato as you're playing will probably more than encompass the difference between equal tempered and a, and a just intonation. 
or Pythagorean or I'm not an expert in these different tunings but I get the idea and uh, an equal tempered half step I believe is uh, bigger than uh, but in you know in the Pythagorean and the in the just intonation there are you know there's different half steps in within one scale there's there's but this is not a video about that Oops. See, I got another funky thing. I just I don't understand why I did that. Oh, no, that's what I wanted it to do. No? See. Again. See, in some circumstances, my cursor would have, at that point, already moved on to the next beat. But in that circumstance, because of something I did, because I modified the node or something, and then and then so that gives me a variable behavior when I, th I thought I was going to create the next note. So A, D flat, major third, minor six. But in this spelling, it's an augmented fifth or diminished fourth. If you were to invert it, if it, if it were inverted. So, augmented fifth to a perfect fifth. Because we, we go down a half step in the, in the lower voice, and we go down a whole step. So the interval becomes smaller. And up, up a half step in the, in the, in the higher voice. So I think, um, be natural so we've widened the interval again to another minor six this time a proper minor six instead of an augmented fifth and then uh, get the leading tone of the G scale here in the upper voice and so uh, Let's keep it radical. This is a very dramatic moment in the piece. It's a very dramatic moment. Common tone. Stay on that B natural. Oh, right. It's not a G sharp scale. It's just a sharp. Sharp one. Leading tone of the two. The two would be a Phrygian. It's a Phrygian. But it's not really. It's, it's a chromatic, chromatic scale. G sharp, A, B flat. <sighs> but uh, we're still in a G, still treating it. I'm still treating it like a G. It's following the. So we go to the five and then seven, to the ten, to the to the minor six. These open fourths. Uh, yeah, how to explain in layman's terms why I would refer to this as a G minor, still. Again, 
I'm gonna give him a courtesy flat. Courtesy flat. C to A flat. D So I want it F sharp, but I want the next one to be F natural, so I'm just going to call it G flat. I'm just going to call it G flat. And then F natural. Then an F natural in the upper voice, we're crossing Okay, let's get weird. I like to keep it weird. <laughs> and just so everybody knows where we're at, you know, courtesy flats all around. Just, uh, yeah, why not? Why not? I just wish I knew how to add a parenthesis. <sighs> so here, five dot for dotted quarter, and then I hold down shift and hit equals. Yeah. No compromises. No compromises. I'm not trying to please any... No, I mean, I'm trying to please everybody, but it's got to be a surprise, you know? If I make everybody happy, and they're, like, not surprised, then I'm just another... Just another guy... Um... Conforming to uh, conforming to the uh, <clears throat> it has to be a surprise. They have to be surprised and delighted. Almost done.
I'm not bothering to include any slurs and uh, mm. anything like that. Uh, I will later, maybe. But I mean, honestly, who's gonna? I mean, if they did want to tongue those notes, you know, staccato, legato, slurred, connected, unconnected. If it's going to be technically difficult, it may as well be predictable. But not too predictable. But fun. It's got to be fun. It's gotta be really fun. Courtesy flat. I understand this is a chromatic scale. I'm happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is going to be cool. Just a bull in a china shop. Who gave that guy a notation software? Who is responsible for this? Kind of jarring when I have to skip to the next page like that. But we got to wrap it up here. Really, a pretty harmonically conservative there in the upper part. Briefly go to C sharp minor, 
and end on this, yeah. Uh, end on a, you know, a dominant chord of the original G minor. This upper note being the leading tone of the G minor scale. It's always, it's always kind of weird to try to describe the theory of what I'm doing because I'm like, am I teaching somebody who doesn't know any theory or am I talking, am I discussing with somebody who knows more about theory than I do? I don't know. Um, this has been a rewarding experience. I would say this is the most uh, complete most complete, most best, uh, greatest, uh, this is the most fun I've ever had composing with notation software and, and done a complete thing start to finish. And, uh, you know, it's hard to say, oh, I'm going to, it's, it's hard to say, it's hard to be content, you know, with 21 measures, 18, 19, 20, 20 measures. It's hard to be content with 20 measures. And when I was a kid, I would, I would write about 10 or 20 bars of, really difficult music that was getting like exponentially more complex and then I'd, I would save that file and then never come back to it. I don't like coming back to things, you know. Maybe if I had uh, more self-esteem I would say this is a song that I'm working on and it's going to be a great work someday and I come back to it. Uh, but I'm in denial about my low self-esteem so I just tell myself, yep, 20 bars, that's good. It's good art. It's good. No, I don't, I don't have low self-esteem. Some people have told me that. and You know, everybody has their moments, but... Uh, I don't believe in walking around every day saying... Uh, saying... Uh, I suffer from low self-esteem. Doesn't that suck? So, everybody's got their days. So here, courtesy accidentals all around. You can have all the accidentals you want. They're free. Just so everybody knows what's going on, you know? Because it gets, gets a little radical. It gets a little... People don't know what to expect, you know? But... Here we are, second to last measure. So I want to stay somewhat within some kind of a box. I, I want to. And I'm going to. Right, F double sharp under a B natural. Uh, B natural would be a major three. Oh, I'm sorry, in, we're in G sharp minor. B natural would be a minor three, and the F double sharp would be a major seven, or the leading tone, or a sharp 
major seven, major seven and minor three are a minor third apart. Or in this case, F to B is would be called a fourth, so we would call I would call it a double diminished fourth. A double diminished fourth because F to B by itself is a diminished fourth. F to B is a diminished. I'm sorry, it's an augmented fourth. And to squeeze that augmented fourth down to a, a down to a major third. You'd have to diminish it twice, so it's a double diminished. Because, hear me out now, F natural to B natural is an augmented fourth. F sharp to B natural is a fourth, perfect fourth. F double sharp to B natural is a diminished fourth. Oh, right, right, right. Major third equals diminished fourth. And I hope you understand. I hope you understand. If you don't understand, you know, I know I don't have like a million subscribers. I have like 15 subscribers on my YouTube channel. But I'd like to increase that number. And so it helps the YouTube algorithm if you go ahead and say, Hey Aaron, I don't understand. I know you're a quack. And whatever explanation you try to give me won't make any sense. And it'll just leave me more confused and more discouraged about learning music further. But just, just say it and just say, Aaron, I don't understand. This makes no sense to me. And then I'll have an idea of what my next video should be. And the, the algorithm says, hey, people are commenting on Aaron's videos. Maybe, maybe we'll boost, we'll boost his uh, content. I love it when it does that. I was hoping it would take this one measure and stretch it out over the whole page. I love it when it does that. I mean, it's like everybody, that's such a wonderful thing that just everybody feels so blessed when you take the one bar and you spread it out over the whole page. Now, if I exit out entry mode and I try to, oops, oops, whoa. And I try to select and I hold down shift in the left square bracket. Okay, that squeezed it, but it squeezed it onto the last line. And it's like, I, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go there. Courtesy flat. Right. So E flat to E natural. Call it an augmented octave. A minor ninth. Nothing weird about that. And that minor ninth expands down a half step in the bass. Up a half step in the treble. Oh, up a whole step in the treble. So the minor ninth expands to become a major tenth. And so in the context of a D major chord, D major being the five of our uh, original uh, G minor, uh, E flat would be a flat nine, and E natural would be a major nine. A minor nine and a major nine uh, set uh, set up against each other in a in a I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's probably let's listen to it. Let's listen to it. And disclaimer: I hate the way the robot plays it. Always, the robot always sucks. Even those people who go to school and obtain a, a degree and a large part of their education is learning how to produce a synthetic orchestra, state-of-the-art synthetic orchestras, I hear it and it just makes me mad. It just makes me angry because I'm thinking about all the musicians who aren't getting paid 
And I'm also thinking about, uh, it just doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound as good. It sounds okay. It sounds a heck of a lot better than my robot here. But uh, one day I believe that robots will liberate humanity from the necessity for work. And But even at that point, we will have to find a way to motivate ourselves to do work because that's kind of how we're wired. And maybe we can rewire ourselves and then we can achieve perfect satisfaction as a as just an entity within a a computer network. We'll, you know, download our consciousness onto onto a hard drive basically. But uh, until then uh, we should let real musicians play the music. Sometimes you, I think it's too radical. Then I'll pick it up and I'll play it. I'll play it a few times, practice it, study it, analyze it, listen, listen, listen. And I'll say, no, it's not too radical. It's actually really awesome. And then I might later pick it up. But I'm not playing so well that day. Or I might just say, no, oh, it is too radical. It's too darn radical. Usually the better I get to know my, my pieces the more I like them. But it it always sounds too radical when you have a stupid robot playing it. So bad. It's not a musician, it's a robot. Oh my god, that flat fives just sounded so stupid. It sounds so stupid when the robot plays it. Well, there you go. Uh, I like the ending. Uh, I didn't study composition in college. I mean, I took, uh, I think I took two semesters of uh, music theory, two quarters of music theory. But there you go. That was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And please like and subscribe and follow me and watch all my videos. Thank you. Goodbye.